Hi, this is a mini presentation I've put together. My name is Michael LeVay, and I've been working on a new graphics technique that lets you have perfectly smooth edges on sprites and textures that are at least 50 pixels large. And the runtime overhead is pretty small. You have to run your graphics through a tool and you get some pretty good results. Uh, it's pretty timely. With 4K displays, um, a lot of the, there's going to be a lot of need for more processing to and more texture memory. Um, this can help diffuse that situation. Um, Things just look a lot better without requiring any more texture memory than they currently do. So I've put this video together to show the technique to other developers. I'm building a tool that handles the processing and I'd like to share it with developers to give me feedback before I launch. So you can see uh, there's a beta sign up at frogtoss.com slash carve. Frogtoss is my company and uh, we have a sign up there for the tool and we're going to be uh, working with those developers to make it as good as possible. Um, so I'm going to start off by showing it in action. And then I'm going to explain it. So this is one of the highest resolution Street Fighter sprites that exist. It exists. It's from the HD Remix, and it's been zoomed in. So you get the stair step effect. If you take a look at the hair, you can see the um, the bit of a stair step effect going on there. Um, once you run this tool that I'm talking about in this technique, it cleans it up pretty nicely. So you get uh, a really smooth edge. Um, all of these, these are all screenshots that are rendered from an OpenGL renderer in my, in my application. And you can easily get that running in Direct3D or anything else. So this is not some offline tool or some Photoshop filter. This is actually happening in real time. This is a banana. This is the foreshot of a banana before the tool gets to it. So what you're looking at here is you've got about 100 pixels vertically and about 50 or 30 pixels horizontally, and it's been scaled up a bit. So you get a bit of a bilinear filter, a bit of the blurry edges in there. Once you run it through the tool, the banana gets the nice smooth contour on there. So you get, and that would, that, that smooth contour persists at any resolution. Here's a, here's a close up of that. You can see uh, the before. You can see how once you zoom in, it still has that nice contour. This is an example of a graphic from an uh, iPad game I worked on uh, that is a uh, pre-retina graphic. So you can, it has sort of, it has the rough edges that you'd expect from a pre-retina game and it was just gonna require better art if we, were to, if we were to rebuild it. But we could do this and basically get the same retina edges out of it with just, uh, with just a single uh, step through the process. So that's, that's uh, some of the preview images, but I'm going to show you the app itself and the actual process. So this is an example of a sprite prior to any processing. You can see the bilinear filtered edges on there. And what we do is we actually polygonize it. We generate a polygon edge for it. What I did there is I, I slid a, a tolerance slider, which allows you to approximate the contour of the image. There are a few other sliders. Like if you use smoothing, you can see it soften the edges. That's not the right thing for this image. Um, there's also a skin width slider, so you can actually widen the image out. I'm gonna hit save, which is going to bake out a version of the image with the edges cleaned up. Click on preview, and you can see the difference now. Get perfectly smooth edges. So what we're doing here is we're actually generating a sign distance field from for a sprite, similar to a paper that Valve released in 2007, Chris Green at Valve released it. But we're doing something a little bit different. We're actually generating a polygon based on the contours of the sprite in a pre-processing step. That's what this tool does. And then from that, it generates a signed distance field based on that polygon. So what are the, what are the, I'm gonna go and talk a little bit more about what signed distance fields are soon. But I wanna talk about some of the benefits you get here. So once you have a signed distance field um, baked into your alpha channel, you can, determine how far away each fragment is from the actual edge of the sprite. This lets you do fun things. For example, you can build an outline for your sprite. You could build a nice solid black cartoon style outline if you want. I've chosen to actually do an age, uh, a complete hue cycle just to show off the technique. You can generate drop shadows. In this case, I've animated it just to highlight exactly what it is I'm talking about. That's kind of fun. To be clear, I can show you right now in this tool that we're only using two triangles. So there's nothing else going on here. This is not, this is nothing that's happening on the CPU. The CPU knows nothing about that drop shadow. It's all happening inside of a demo shader that I wrote, which I'm happy to share. 
or you can have a glow. And in this case, the glow highlights the edge, something that we can do fairly simply because we can determine how close to the edge we are at any point because of what's in the alpha channel. So I want to talk a little bit about what the cost of this is. Um, I'm going to show you here is an excerpt of a fragment shader. This is a very simple version of the fragment shader. If you look at this, the disk mask is calculated from the alpha channel color. This is because we store the sign distance field in the alpha channel. So anything that's uh, greater than or equal to 0 0.5 or halfway is inside the sprite. And anything that's set to zero, anything that's not is outside the sprite. So that's as simple as it gets. This is what you're putting in your alpha channel and this works on mobile. Um, you can do, the version that you were looking at is a little bit more and it's a little bit more nicer because what we do is we actually uh, take the screen space derivatives to get generate a nice smooth edge just about one at about 1.5 pixels um, wide and what that lets us do is it lets us do uh, an anti-alias in the in the actual shader at any point so that's a little bit nicer if you have the actual power on a, on a desktop gpu i do recommend doing that you get nice anti-aliasing in the shader without having to enable MSAA on your video card at any point. So that's, that's the cost of the fragment shader. This is what you have to do instead of a standard alpha blend. What does a sign distance field actually look like? The reason we can render the, uh, the edges at such a high level of detail is because we create a texture that informs the fragment shader how far from the edge we are for each when it goes to rasterize each fragment. We store this information in a sign distance field, which we encode into the alpha channel. Now, the version on the right does look like the blurry version of what's on the left, but it's a little bit more than that. The white part of the image is what's inside the sprite. And the black part is completely outside of the sprite. And what's interesting is the gray area. That's the area leading up to the edge of the sprite. And anything that's 0 0.5 or greater is inside the sprite. When you enable bilinear filtering and you zoom in, what you get is a perfect edge at all points because you can calculate that on a per fragment basis in the shader. Now I didn't invent sign distance fields and they and I didn't I certainly didn't invent sign distance fields and I didn't invent the technique of using them to rasterize for a high for images. But what I did do is come up with a technique to actually polygonize standard size sprites and get this to work. Um, so this technique which has existed already and shipped in games that you know say Valve has, has released since Chris Green's paper in 2007 can now be used on standard size sprites, such as the Street Fighter characters, for example, uh, in, in Third Strike. Well, I guess any Street Fighter game with modern sprites work quite well. But uh, this, is, this, is the, uh, this is the technique that uh, uh, will work for most games that are out there today with, without needing to have large vector versions of the images that exist already. So this is, this is the technique and uh, Basically, I'm looking to get to work with developers to get this to work. If you want to, if you're serious about getting your game to be 4K proof, or to be able to not crash on an iPad because you're running out of texture memory, uh, this is this is the tool that I'd like to share with you, and I'd like to actually work with a developer to get this going. So please do contact me with any feedback why you might want to work with this, or even if you think that there's something about this technique you saw which makes it inappropriate for what you're working on, I'd like to hear why. So do send me an email at mikeatfrogtoss.com. That's my personal, that's my direct email. So I'll definitely get that. Thanks for, thanks for listening.